after last week. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to recap some things that we talked about last week, uh, desperate times, call for desperate measures. Uh, and then we're going to uh, move on because we did get a chance to, to finish uh, last week. Um, but tonight, uh, the title of the message is Desperate Times. Desperate, desperate, desperate. Desperate times call for desperate measures. One of the things that we talked about last week is we made the point that everyone know, everyone knows if there isn't, you know, we're going to uh, take out a phone, we're going to show you. Does, any, does anyone in here not know what 911 is for on your phone? Anybody? Okay, I'm, I'm just being funny, y'all. <laughs> Everybody in here knows that 911 is a number that we pick up the phone and for, it's for emergency, okay? If, in other words, if you in your house and you smell smoke, we talked about this, what, what you gonna do? You gonna call 911, you gonna try to get out of there, okay? If someone has fallen and they can't get up, we talked about this last week, <laughs> you know, what we gonna do? We gonna call 911, right? And we also talked about in desperate times, we know that, you know, because desperate times call for desperate measures. When we turn on the news, and everybody, we, if this is fresh in a lot of our minds, even right now, when you was watching the news a couple weeks ago, and they was talking about Irene, okay? Irene is coming, okay? Oh, this couple of years back, Isabel was coming. Time after that, Gaston was coming. Well, what, what did people do? Desperate times call for desperate measures. What that mean? Go to food line and just buy all the water, batteries, and flashlights, and everything else, right? Why? Because desperate times. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Listen, one of the things that, you know, that blows my mind, and, and I just really have to, to really just get down where we live at, in this type of ministry because my wife and I have been doing this ministry long enough where we, we know people that die, that have died, okay? We, 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 we know people that have lost their lives. Yeah. We know people that have, um, that have been divorced because of, um, you know, issues and, and sin. And one of the things that just kind of blows my mind when you're sitting down with someone and talking to them about the obvious issues in their life, okay, there's, there's, there, almost, there seems to be no desperation. It, all, it almost, and I, talk, I used this analogy last week, many people that we deal with in a totally delivered and type free, and really just in church period, you know, you have to be in this type of situation. But, you know, we have uh, James over there who's a, a, a police officer, and we talked about, you know, what it would be like if he got a call, 911 call, and he went to a house that he heard over the radio was a fire, okay, going on at such and such address. And he, I mean, he, he's like, you know, just rushing to get there because he knows people's lives. Are, in, are at stake, and he gets up to the window of the house, and there's smoke and fire, and people in there watching TV. You know, they just, you know, <laughs> you know, the baby, the baby over there, and the thing he like this, and you know, the older kids are on the game playing the game, <laughs> but it's a fire going on. One of the worst things. It's to not know when 911 is going on in, in your life. Mm -hmm. And you know, there and people come through this type of ministry and you and you can look at them, you can talk to them, you can see them kind of going in and out, and you can tell, you know, that they're struggling, but this thing, you know, we talked about it early in the in the in the uh, marks of an addiction, denying won't won't cause them to live. 
and live their life and or respond to their situation like there is a real emergency going on in their life. And when you really get a magnifying glass and you really start to examine, you know, not just their life, but then you go to their home. And you see just, you know, just um, a greater cause for desperation. Kids doing their own thing. Husband doing his own thing. Wife doing his own thing. And this call to desperation, when you call them and you, and, you, and, you, and you go to them and say, man, you know, why aren't you responding like there's a 911 going on in your life? And it's like, and we saw it in the, we saw it in the scripture, the family that we looked at last week. You know, we talked about Lot and his family. In the, in the uh, chapter 19 of Genesis, you don't have to turn there. We're not, that's the, not the text we're going to talk about tonight, but I'll just recap it. But, you know, the angels came and told him, said, look, God is about to destroy the city. And so he went there, man, and he was trying to get them to hurry up because the time was ticking on what was going to happen. And the Bible says that they seemed to be, you know, they lingered. Matter of fact, the, the son-in-law thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. wow. And so when the morning came, the Bible says that the angels actually had to grab their hands and, and, and escort them out. And one of the parts that we forgot to mention last week was Lot. We might have we talked about this. But Lot said, look. Can I just get to the next city? I don't want to. I don't want to just get out of the vicinity as a whole. Can I just get a, just a little? Can I just stay a little close to the city? Wow. How many of us, you know, go okay? Yeah, you know, I'll leave. I'll stop kind of messing with what I used to do. But I don't want to leave it all together. I don't want. I don't want to abandon. You don't want to abandon the friends. You don't want, you know, you, you don't want to abandon, you know, you don't want to get rid of his number. And you don't want to get rid of her number. You don't want to, you know, you don't want God to come in and really do just, you know, you want God to do patchwork on you. You don't want him to do a, a overall, a, a total overhaul to totally change you and make you new and create everything that new. So you want to kind of just hold on to what's about to be consumed. We found out that because this family didn't know, or, or they acted like they didn't know that a 911 was going on in their life, we see that the wife, Lot's wife, they're running out the city. Everybody is, is leaving. But because there was such sin, the sin was so great in Sodom that the wife, you know, somebody has to look back. She had, to, she had to get one more drink. She had to get one more shot. She had to get one, have one more rendezvous, one, one more look. And it cost her her life. We also brought up the point that it cost the son-in-laws didn't even get out. And because the son-in-laws didn't get out, now Lot is in a cave with his perverted daughters. The sin of that city had corrupted this family so bad that now the daughters get the father drunk and they sleep with him. And they get pregnant and start this, you know, the nations of Amnon and the Moabites. What does it have to take for us to get desperate? What am I talking about? I'm not talking about walking around panicking. I'm not talking about walking around like, you know, like you're out of sorts. I'm talking about getting desperate for the things of God. Getting desperate for his presence. Thank you, Lord. Getting desperate for his plan for your life. 
getting desperate for the things that he has for you. You're a son. Let me tell you something. I just want to speak that there are people in here right now that you have assignments. You have assignments that the enemy has tried to hinder you. And listen, you know, he's thrown everything at you. 